Hi, welcome to Comic Talk. I'm Josh. And I am going to keep on loving you. It's the only thing I want to do. Loving you. <laughs> uh, this is our monthly review for February of 2016. 20,000? 20, 2016. It's from the future. Okay, this month we have uh, three titles each, as usual, that we're going to talk about as our top from our poll list that we've read. Uh, and we have just a couple on the bottom. We'll get to those a little bit later. Uh, but for our top picks, here's what we got. Astonishing Ant-Man, number five. I Hate Fairyland. Is this number five? Yes. Number five. And Power Man and Iron Fist, number one. And I have Karnak, number dose, Vision, number four, and Descender, with a D, number ten. Awesome. We got a lot of Marvel. We do. This time. We do. Mostly Marvel. I don't think we did it on purpose. It just, no, it just worked out that way. Just a good month for Marvel books, I guess. Uh, so let's start, I guess, over here with the first one we mentioned. We'll start out with Astonishing Ant-Man number five, Spencer, Rosanas, Boyd, and Quintana. So why is this in our top? Because it's awesome, and it's been awesome since we picked it up. Uh, the humor in it, while we decided last week was a little bit bro-ish, um, still makes us laugh. So, I mean, what are you going to do? Um, the... Protagonist is somebody that you really sympathize with. Uh, he's such a unique character in his own right. I mean, this book just really has a lot going for it. Yeah, it's kind of like one of the... It's like a really good Judd Apatow movie. You know, you, you just have to say, well, it's funny. Like, what are yeah. you going to do? You, you want to not like it because it's, like you said, it's kind of bro-ish or mm -hmm. uh, it skews, it skews kind of mainstreamy feeling. I don't know how to put it. You know what yeah. I mean? It, Who's the guy that they cast as Ant-Man in the movie? Uh, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd, yeah. I would say also say like a Paul Rudd movie. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very fitting. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's fucking funny. Uh, it's well written. It's really tightly paced. Uh, and there's just shitloads of, of good jokes that really hit well. Mm -hmm. You know? I, it also, I mean, runs the emotional spectrum quite thoroughly mm -hmm. i mean you know there are very sad heartfelt moments in this which i don't know if they would be able to accomplish necessarily without the humor um you know if this was like just a purely dark book i don't think it would resonate as much but just the tone that it sets and the kind of guy that he is and everything like that um, it really makes those heartfelt moments like really pop out mm -hmm. you know? yeah and it's just it's it's putting on a lot of hats it's juggling mm -hmm. a lot of different things at once he's using it's it's trope filled, but it also turns a lot of tropes on its head. Mm -hmm. I would say it does this in a way that a lot of good TV shows do the same thing. Over the last fifteen years or so, there's been a thing with TV shows like the good ones that get cult status take the tropes and they twist them around and give you the opposite result as you would expect. It's mm -hmm. a lot of lampshade hanging, and we get the same thing here, which is just interesting from a comic to do that in the comic world, whereas yeah. it's become almost old hat in television to do that. It's yeah. still kind of new here to do a mainstream superhero tropes and then spin them like that. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I would almost compare it to like professional wrestling in a way because everybody like the whole, oh, it's fake, you know, we're admitting to it happened in like, you know, the early 90s, something like that. Um, but there was still that element of uh, kayfabe for lack of a better term in comic books for a long time where you just didn't I mean aside from Deadpool you really didn't pull out of that and look at it like or portray it for like what it really was like you know continuity and um, world building and stuff like that were so like important in Keystone like you didn't want to compromise that shit in any way you know but they're totally doing it now and it's awesome yeah yeah it's just a good book it's it just hits all the right buttons for me yeah. uh, for this kind of thing. You couldn't do this kind of book, I think, any better than it's being done here. Mm -hmm. And that deserves mention. 
yeah. deserves to be read because of that, I think. Sure. So the first one I would like to discuss be Karnak number two. So we were waiting on this for quite a while. Um, again, I think the artist was having problems or something. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'm really glad that they waited for him to come back instead of just getting somebody else because for me, the art is about 60% of putting this in my in my top for the month. Like it's just so cool. The writing's actually pretty tight as well. Um, I mean all the dialogue is very deliberate and the characters introduced are all very again deliberate. <laughs> it's such an awkward character. He's so different and odd. It, but it, in a in a way that's kind of hard to describe. Mm -hmm. He he's so pessimistic and and uh, he's a hater. Yeah. He's a total hater. Yeah, he, he's a strange protagonist to, to be following. Uh, but it just works with the art. Uh, like you say, the art really is a big part of it. It's, it's really cool. Uh, and again, it's another one of these books where the layouts and paneling take a back seat mm -hmm. to just really great portrayals of, of the characters and the action and the movement. Another thing I guess that's a little bit odd for us is just the sheer amount of this that's just panel to panel action sequence mm -hmm. without words whatsoever, which generally isn't something that we're into. Right. Or even like entertain the thought of I mean, we've never been like, oh maybe we should add Justice League, you know, this month to mm -hmm. to the poll. But it's just done with such great effect that I can't even I mean, I liked it. I can't even begin to bitch about it. Right. Well, it has that same style as uh, Warren Ellis's, and then also Wood and uh, Woods when they did Moon Knight. No, it's Smallwood. Yeah, yeah Wood and Smallwood, that's right. Uh, it has that same feel as that Moon Knight series, as well as Brubaker's and Fraction's Immortal Iron Fist, mm. uh, where the dialogue is sparing, but when it's there, it's really well put together and really drives the story forward. But right. they, it's not just jam-packed. It's not Bendis-type dialogue where mm -hmm. everybody's talking all the time. It's uh, a lot of action to move you to the next important conversation, and that conversation kicks off another action sequence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it's done to great effect here. And again, it really lets the artist take the reins as far as the storytelling in a lot of ways because you know you can tell a great story just through movement and stuff, mm -hmm. and that's precisely what he does. Yeah, well, and the character isn't exactly a huge talker anyway, so... Uh, if you get him going, you know. True, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he, he's one of these guys where you learn a lot about him simply through how he makes his way through the world, which mm -hmm. you see mostly through art. Yeah, just observing him. Right. So, very cool. Uh, so let's talk about another book that seems to make our list every single month. This is Scotty Young and... Jean-Francois Ballon's I Hate Fairyland. This is number five. So this is still here. Yeah, yeah, it is. Next. <laughs> <laughs> no, this thing is always great. The art is amazing. And the reason it keeps making our list, I think is uh, something we didn't really talk about with Astonishing Ant-Man, but I think also applies to it, is that every issue brings some new stuff. It's... Mm -hmm. They're not just retreading the same thing, and it's even more apparent here in I Hate Fairyland. Yeah, especially this issue. I mean, this issue, uh, the very end of it takes a huge turn, you mm -hmm. know, and just establishes, like, an entirely different premise for storyline going forward, um, which, again, we're only, like, five issues in, so right. I think it's awesome that he's really, like, taking it upon himself to just make this go every fucking which way he possibly can, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, he's, he's not happy just telling the story that made this popular. He's mm -hmm. going to keep shaking up the status quo and giving us oh, entirely new premises to work with. It's really great. Uh, the art, obviously, it's Scotty Young, so you're either going to love Scotty Young art or probably hate the hell out of it, really, yeah, sure. when it comes down to it. But uh, if you can dig the art, it's really good. It's really high-quality art, but it's just very cartoony and fun. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I do too. Uh, yeah, it's, I hate Freyland, man. It, yeah. What are you going to say? It's great. It's not just in the top every month. It's probably in the top for us just in general. If we did a yearly review, yeah, this yeah. this would this also would be, the be there. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to know anything else about it, just 
watch any of the other probably like fucking 10 episodes we've had where we've just been glowing about how much we love it and all the cool little shit in it. Yeah. Next. Descender. This is from Image Comics. I don't know if I've heard of them before. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, Jeff Lemire and David Wynn. Is that right? Dustin Wynn. So there was not action-wise a lot happening in this issue. Um, it was just a lot of dialogue. Um, there was, you know, some tension in places, people pointing guns at each other whatnot. But, you know, they're fucking space cowboys. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's what you're going to get. But I think we both agree that these two little moments of dialogue were enough to just make this really, really stand out this month. Um, both between Tim 21 and Tim 22 and between uh, the Doctor and Telsa. Yeah, those two scenes, it's not just that they make the comic what it is. They're basically this issue. That's 90% mm -hmm. of this issue is those two conversations. But don't, let's not forget the artwork either. No. It's yeah. It's really great, this issue, and it's... I feel like it's continuing to come together uh, with the art. He's getting a little less loose with it. It started yeah. out really loose and mm -hmm. almost difficult. Just little to bits here and there. And, it, yeah. it, it's tightening up a little bit more. It's still got the same basic watercolor premise mm -hmm. uh, with the art, but it's it's getting cleaner and cleaner without changing the style. It still feels yeah. the same. It's just easier to read. Uh, love it. It looks great. I think it's probably pretty hard to do watercolor this <clears throat> dense. Oh, yeah, most certainly. I, mean, I can't even imagine, you know, just having that shit, like, running everywhere, and mm -hmm. you're trying to make, like, this very dark scene with all these blacks and reds and stuff like that. So if he was planning on getting good at watercolor by doing this book, he's definitely he's definitely there. Yeah, he's managed it now. Um, but but it's still as sparse when it's called for, which I think is cool. I think he had a definite vision going into this book, and while well, it's kind of changed over time, there are some things that are definite staples, um, and I like them. I enjoy them. I do too. It, if nothing else, the look of this is different enough that it's nice to have on your list just because it's refreshing. It, it's a nice change of pace just to mm -hmm. look at. Just yeah. When you're going through it, it, it really breaks up the monotony of some other books. That, yeah. you know, it's it's pretty easy if if you're not paying attention to art to end up with a lot of books that look the same, and this mm -hmm. definitely does not. Yeah, no, this is not anyone's house style. This right. Is yeah. Different. All right. Well, let's talk about the last one that I have this week on my side of the screen. It says Power Man and Iron Fist number one by Walker Green and Luridge. Yes. So, uh, I'm not as familiar with these characters as you are. So, I, I suppose most of the things that I enjoyed about it were just these sort of basic elementary introductions to them, like Luke Cage being a badass and uh, Iron Fist just being totally fucking about being Iron Fist at all, at all points in time. Right. Really, one of the things that I really liked about this, uh, I'm not going to say that I'm like, huge into these characters, but I, I will go far enough as to say they're definitely up there as some of my favorite characters in the Marvel Universe. Sure. Uh, but I, I haven't read extensively on these guys. I, I've read some of the, the more important Iron Fist runs, uh, you know, a Living Weapon and Immortal Iron Fist, uh, some of that stuff. Uh, and uh, the Luke Cage stuff really for me just stems from Alias mm -hmm. and New Avengers, uh, both Brian Michael Bendis and both very heavily focused on Luke Cage and, and to a lesser degree Jessica Jones mm -hmm. uh, but I loved both of those series and for both of these characters what's really cool about this is it's taking them forward without losing what's happened before it's he's taking all of these things that we've gotten over the years with these guys mm -hmm. and really pushing them forward for real uh, which isn't something we see all the time with comics but it yeah. seems with most of the Marvel stuff that we're liking uh, this is a recurring theme, mm -hmm. and this is another book where we're getting it, where we're really taking these characters, we're saying we acknowledge where they've been, now let's do new things with them. Let's let's make them progress as a person. Maybe that's one of the unseen or consequences of the constant reboots uh, that we somewhat bitched about. And you can check it out and decide for yourself how much bitching was done. Over there. Yeah, over there. But... Yeah, it really frees them up to be able to do, like, whatever the hell they want, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, they could both die at the end of this, and, you know, they'll just reboot it, and then fucking the next series they'll be on Mars or something. I mean, who gives a shit? You're going to reboot it in, like, less than a year anyway. Right. 
Right. And it, a lot of people complain about that. They say, oh, that ruins the continuity, continuity, continuity. Interesting thing here, though, is they're, they've changed these characters quite a bit. They're moving them forward and doing something new. Mm -hmm. But they're recognizing continuity from the past, which yeah. is neither here or there for me. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, if you tell a good story with these guys and they're completely different people, fuck it. If it's good, it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, but this has the best of both worlds for people, I think. Uh, which doesn't seem that hard to do to me. It, I don't understand. I think another one that we could go back to that you could look at is what's the matter with DC up here. I think that's one of the problems with DC is they're afraid to do this with their characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's one of the things that Marvel's really embracing. And I think it, it is part of why Marvel keeps gaining and, and DC keeps losing is we've read all these stories before. So it's yeah. nice to see with these books, like what we're about to talk about, The Vision, mm -hmm. uh, like this one, and even with Ant-Man, uh, all of these characters moving and, and becoming new characters. So you get to read new, interesting things about people who are different, you know? Which I can't say how much they're doing that in, like, the super mainstream. Like, sure. I mean, I don't know what Iron Man's doing right now. I assume he's probably the same shit, you know? And um, I guess Thor, I mean, just because Jason Aaron is on it, you know, generally does interesting things, even if we don't personally enjoy it. But yeah, there's really nothing. I think somebody said it in the in the comments like within the last week. Like, there's really no like sort of middle ground like B list titles that they can really fuck around with. You know. Yeah. Like I mean, there should be probably like you know like a lot of the old like Charlton characters. Like there should be like a Blue Beetle comic where he's just doing like whatever the fuck you know right. and. The question, I fucking harp on that all the time. Like, where's the goddamn question comic? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they have, like, a huge, like, universe full of characters, you know, but they just seem to be taking, like, okay, this is our A squad that we're going to make into movies one day, so we're going to, you know, be super forward with them and, you know, control every little thing about their fucking universe. And then the B titles, like, there'll be one or two here and there, and they'll get canceled, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, they don't give them time to flourish, but who knows how this will do maybe this will get canceled soon but i just don't see it i don't think it will because it's good yeah uh and and again i i mean i don't want to harp on dc too much because they do have cool stuff that we're just not reading just sure. because of the way things you know timing uh so i mean they they have their power man and iron fist stuff as well they they have grayson and midnighter and things like that that, that we could like one or two titles there, there's a anyway. few but uh I mean, my overarching point here is just that the, what's great about this is we, we see these characters in a new light. Mm -hmm. We get, uh, and they're just cool ideas for characters. Luke Cage as this guy who used to be a tough badass from the streets upbringing mm -hmm. kind of guy. Uh, but now he has a wife and a kid and he has to balance this out and shave off those rough edges, rough edges you know, right. loosen up and, and be more of a, a father uh, and with Iron Fist, we see the opposite. This guy that's kind of on the on the the downside. Uh, he used to be a much more famous hero. He mm -hmm. used to be doing a lot more, and uh, now because of you know the people around him and how they're softening, he has less to do. And right. so we're seeing him try to pull people back into it because he loves being Iron Fist. Yeah, that's all you he know? wants to do. Yeah, so it's this great mix of characters that are new but utilizing old characters. It's a great way to, to bring these titles forward. Sure. And speaking of that... Last on the top, we got The Vision by King and Walta and Bel Air. This is another one that's been consistently pretty top. This one, it's just, it's so weird. I can't not love it. Man, and it's so tightly paced. Yeah, and the dialogue is so tight. And just everything is... It's just so deliberate. Everything about it is so, like, almost inhumanly deliberate. It's, yeah. it's crazy. It's it's really, really well put together comic. Mm -hmm. uh, just the pacing is... There's so much going on. There's all of these moving pieces. And they even... The way it's written and drawn, those pieces are even happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. You're getting dialogue from one piece over the top of scenes happening in another piece. Uh, and it still all comes together so clean mm -hmm. and perfect. I never feel lost. No. Like, ever. No, it's it's masterful. 
Yeah. This is the best thing at Marvel. I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the best things in general right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I tell people about this all the time. Like, people are like, oh, yeah, I used to read comics. Yeah. What's good right now? I'm like, dude, fucking Vision is, yeah. is amazing. Like, yeah. Yeah, even if you're not a fan of the character in general, which I, I'm really not. I don't, I don't give a shit. I mean, sure. Like, I love this comic, but I'm not going to go look for old uh, Avengers shit to, like, read them in. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I will definitely read this for as, as long as it's made. Okay, well, let's talk about a couple things we didn't like. The shit list. It's a short list, but these are worthy, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, first, the l- least controversial yeah. of the two going to be Scarlet Witch number three. This is by Robinson, Dylan, uh, Martin, and Visions. Mm. So you haven't liked this series really in general. Well, I like the art. I agreed to keep reading it because the art was good. Right. Um, In the first two. Yeah. Then they brought in Jason Dylan. Yeah. And now there's just no point. Right. It, it's just crap. I'm, yeah, I don't think I've ever uh, aside from maybe, I know on here I've never just had the opinion of it's unredeemable crap. Uh, m- maybe Last Gang in Town is the closest to yeah. being this bad. Yeah. Uh, but this is the worst thing I think we've done, probably. Probably. There's some like bullshit, nonsensical storyline about leprechauns and they're in Ireland. And again, like the art's just not good anymore. And it's not even like dime storage in a way anymore it's just like a shitty 90s ish kind of comic like villain of the week who's just absurd and you don't really care about him and he's not a real threat to anything and right it's it's just cram packed full of cliches tropes stereotypes uh there's there's nothing redeeming here even the yeah. art is just super boring it's and, house style yeah and it's bland house style it doesn't fit this at all no this, so this is done. We're off of Scarlet Witch. Uh, and considering how much we loved Airboy, which same dude writing it. Robinson, yeah. Uh, it's sad to do, but this is Airboy, you are not Scarlet Witch. Yeah, yeah. Big letdown. Yeah. Don't ever read it. Don't bother. Uh, so the one that we have here that I'm sure is going to be controversial. Oh, is uh, Batman 49, Snyder, Paquette, and Fairbairn. Bjorn. Yes. Bjorn Fairbairn. Bjorn Fairbairn. I mean, this was better than Scarlet Witch. Yeah. But not So it's farting lot. in the shower. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. It, this was about as silly and Jeff Johnsian as you can get without being Jeff Johns writing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we kept coming back to Flashpoint when we were talking about it. Like it feels like it's fucking like a tie-in issue to Flashpoint. Yeah, I mean, it's somehow. it's just a goofy premise on how it all comes together. It's a yeah, the philosophical solution to a technological problem. Yeah, and it it has a few pages that are interesting that are like this Grant Morrison esque else world multiversity kind of remembrance thing where his memories are all jumbled and they're I don't know if this is him getting memories from like actual multiverse mm-hmm. Bruce Wayne Batmans or what but who cares it's yeah. it's just a cheap quick way to end the whole Bruce Wayne is not Batman thing yeah yeah and it feels like all the little stuff that they've been done like building up to this, which sometimes, I guess, once or twice, it seemed a little bit slow-paced. Most of the time, it seemed like it was just, they were just shoving it down your throat and trying to get to the fucking end as soon as possible. Um, but this one was just overboard about it, you know? It really negated a lot of those uh, better scenes, which would kind of, you know, push him back in the direction that, I mean, we knew that he was going to go. But it's like when... When they get to the scene where he's, like, fucking with the memory thing and all that, like, none of that shit matters anymore. Like, it's completely inconsequential. Right. Like, it's like there are bits of this story that, yeah, were just made inconsequential by things that happen later in the story. And that's just really poor, sloppy storytelling, in my opinion. 
Right. Like, when I could have sliced probably four issues out of the middle of this fucking arc and lost nothing. Mm. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. It. I think Snyder's strength is... Bitching at us on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a whole other thing. But uh, I think his strength when writing Batman is the day-to-day Batman fighting crime stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he just can't seem to maintain the larger, more epic arcs. And it seems like every one he tries to push it farther in that direction. And you know when he does, it just it pushes back. <clears throat> right. You know the interesting thing here is I think Scott Snyder and Zack Snyder have the same problem, where they have these grand ideas, these great concepts, uh, and they can show moment to moment action and moment-to-moment stuff really well. They have these great ideas for, here's a sequence that would be cool, or Mm -hmm. here's a storyline that would be awesome, right? And they can give you a quick elevator pitch of it. Right. uh, And you go, man, that sounds great, right? Like, if you give me the elevator pitch of this super heavy story, I'm like, boom, that sounds awesome. I definitely want to read super heavy. Mm -hmm. Uh, But when you get into the nitty-gritty, the piece-by-piece elements of actually putting it together and holding the attention of the reader... And creating a, a good, you know, act one, act two, and act three that that are fulfilling, it falls flat almost every time. Yeah. Snyder, Scott Snyder's best stories that he's told with Batman are the ones with the least consequential storylines, mm-hmm. right? Like Black yeah. Mirror, I think, is probably his best, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And it there's no real big important thing that happens as it goes through it's just some stories about dick grace and his batman sure and uh i mean i think generally the one heralded is the best out of the new 52 that he did was court of owls mm-hmm. which was two trades worth of comics and you know that was one antagonist you know for like the entire time like that mm-hmm. was it that was just the fucking court of owls and it's not like the whole city was gonna go up i mean yes there was like this whole illuminati kind of thing and you know like the the person pulling the strings or whatever but again yeah it wasn't it's just batman dealing with the problem right yeah 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 and it was great right and that's really where his strength lies when he tries to do these grander things it just doesn't work but we we see the same thing with his his like indie work his best indie work or uh you know like witches is a good example there's Mm -hmm. it's not really a grand story it's a very tight in close kind of story and that's just where he thrives i think that's what he does well yeah uh, when he tries to do this dc style storytelling it yeah. just doesn't work very well i want to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that if this super heavy thing had like three trades to go through maybe um i think really if he takes his time on things they seem to turn out better uh but yeah trying to tell this again this uh super cliche dc type of story like it just it doesn't work out no you know and it's not i think because only because we don't like those type of stories um, because I have seen them done successfully, but this isn't an example of that, unfortunately. No. And yeah, I've been reading Batman since New 52 came out, so this is kind of disappointing. That being said, he only has two issues left, 50 and 51, so might as well read them because this is done. So yeah. they're just going to be kind of one-shot things, which I think is his strength. So I'm well, all for seeing, reading 50 and 51 just because it's probably going to be him telling a simple story about Batman, I hope. Well, no, because the next one is uh, Batman versus Bloom. Right. So which, this thing has really got to come to a head, which what, is where it falls the most flat, usually. And probably. Beyond that, I, I, I'm getting really pissed off at myself for that whole, like, well, there's only a couple left, so I might as well read them. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not how shit should work. Like, So I, I'm kind of up in the air about this. Um, I mean, we might end up reading it like just because, but I, I really... If asked right now, I would probably drop it. I'll say that. Well, we are. This is the right now. We have to make this decision, right? That's how this works. So I'm super split on it, man. I It's Batman number 50, right? So it almost seems like for three bucks. But I think it's going to be like a huge one, too. So it'll probably be like $6. Uh, which, you know, when you're like us, which a lot of you guys are, you're reading... 20 to 30 titles what what could we you know for six bucks we could probably get like an image trade or something to read yeah, yeah. Uh, 
or very close to. So it it's a tough decision to make. It, mm-hmm. I because I don't really care what happens with Bloom. That's the thing. Like I don't give a shit. Yeah, it doesn't even and matter I anymore. I think I've given a shit for like a couple months now. So it's like, right. why are we still fucking doing this? You want to drop Batman until fifty two? When the time being, yeah. All right, let's drop Batman yeah. until the next writer, whoever that is, will reconsider at that point. And uh, if it's somebody cool, like maybe the rumored Tom King, maybe if it's going to be bi weekly. Well, that's it for this. We're going to drop Batman. But let's talk about that now for a moment. You want to talk about sure. the fact that some of these are going to be bi weekly? Does, does that turn us on or off of it? Off. Yeah, me too. Um. I don't really believe that a a good story can be even like told in that manner. Like, what are they going to do with the artists? Or is it going to be one artist on it? It's going to have to switch back and forth. It's going to yeah. have to be one of those things where there's multiple guys, or maybe trading pages kind of thing. Yeah, um, we've kind of seen it work with. I mean, so like the Eternal series, like Batman Eternals, man, you know, Batman and Robin Eternal has been pretty good so far. Um, but that going into it was a limited series, right. you know? So they just, you know, sculpted out this huge plot, you know, and then, like, yeah, people kind of section it out from there, and, you know, that works. But I don't know with, you know, something that's supposed to be kind of ongoing, like, how that's going to work out. Yeah. You know? I just don't know about what that does to our poll list, right? Do we really want to read the same title twice a month? I don't know if I even do. Yeah. It, it's going to have to be really compelling for me to want to read it twice a month like that. I mean, I think it would be cool if... I think we've even mentioned this before. I've even mentioned it before. Like, if comics had seasons, mm-hmm. you know? Like, if, say, Batman season ran from, like, uh, August to, like, January. Right. And it came out, like, every week during that time. And then during the rest of the time, it just didn't come out. Right. Yeah, I'd be into take that. take the off-season and they... They keep working, and then they start releasing it again, right? Right, right, yeah. yeah. So they essentially just get, like, super fucking ahead, you know, so then they can just put it out every week. Right. But this, like, continuously, like, year-round putting out, you know, two a month, I don't think it's going to work out. I don't either. I don't. And then I guess they're doing it with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, like all like, the main titles. Yeah. Yeah. So it, when this comes around, and we will be discussing this at the end of the month. At the end of the month, they're going to be telling us, Who's on what, how often it's coming out. Uh, and at that point, I think we're going to make one of these videos where we're going to discuss it, hash it out, and try to figure out heads or tails, right? Sure. So I think we're good here. Uh, we're dropping Batman, which is kind of cool. Uh, but man, that's even less DC. Yeah. We're already yeah. really light on DC, but they're coming up, you know, April or May or whatever. So yeah. maybe we'll get some more in there. Yeah. And again, like, I am a DC fan, so this really pisses me off that there's just not... Yeah, legacy-wise, I'm huge DC. I, yeah, I love it's great, all man. the DC Vertigo stuff from back in the day. They're just... I don't... Eh. Man, even, like, this... I mean, you know, the Wade Flash was very comic booky feeling, but it was just so well done, and mm-hmm. you had to read it. Right. But, I mean, it seems like everything else is just, like, if somebody else tried to write... write Wade Flash, the way that Wade wrote Flash. It's just shitty. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to wrap it up for us this week's episode. Uh, check back on Thursdays. We're going to have another poll list review. Uh, check us out on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Reddit too. Um, yeah. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Comment, please. Tell us things. Bye. <laughs>